Welcome back to the Tide Hero Hanger. Happy Friday, everybody. I hope everyone is doing well. Today, I want to talk to you about Masterpiece Transformers Trends. It's been about two decades since the Masterpiece Transformers lines begun, and I've noticed quite a few trends along the way. We're going to talk about everything from scale to tune accuracy to whether or not they use upgrade kits or background accessories, those kinds of things. Also, premium paint, complexity, and so much more coming up. First off, I want to talk about scale. Scale has changed quite a bit over the last two decades. It started out as 12 inch, but quickly switched to nine inch. And there was almost 10 years, it was like nine years between MP01 that started it all and MP10, which gave us the correct nine inch scale or the modern era of nine inch scale. But there's one more scale change that happened along the way. A lot of people have mentioned this in the comments and I'm starting to agree with them, but basically Legends is just a smaller, cheaper version a cheaper scale for a masterpiece so a lot of the masterpiece collectors have jumped ship and gone to the legend scale so going to the four inch masterpiece i know we talk about masterpiece as being nine inch but legends really are masterpiece at four inch and a smaller price point now they do sort of lack the paint except for when new age does stuff like this now i've said it a few times that i like the magic square designs i prefer those over new age most of the time but there's two figures that i really do feel like New Age knocked out of the park. That's their Cyclonus and their Grimlock. Wymere Grimlock and I forgot their Cyclonus. But looking at them, they both look fantastic. They are almost Masterpiece level. Now the difference between these and if they upscaled on a Masterpiece would be the fact that they would need hardware ratchet and all those kinds of things. And these are mostly friction joints. But some of them actually do have the hardware in them like their Omega Supreme. But anyway, the new scale of Masterpiece some people believe it is legends the next trend that i'm seeing from the masterpiece is tune now i've talked about this had whole videos about it we're just gonna touch on it but cartoon accuracy now there was a point in time where i was looking at it saying that i wish they were more cartoon accurate a little bit a little bit too much of the real world but in my mind it was a little bit too much of engineering setback we need a future where we could actually hit the cartoon accurately and, and i think we're really close if not already there. The Star Toy Blitzwing I recently took a look at on the channel, and that one looks very, very cartoon accurate, almost to a detriment. And, and I do mention this a lot when I talk about cartoon to a detriment. Like, I would have liked the, the thighs to not have gone inwards and outward like an hourglass, but that's cartoon accurate. And so if you're going to stick to it and say you're cartoon accurate, you got to do things like this. So is it too tuned to a detriment? Well, I absolutely love the figure, so I guess it's not a big deal to me. Some people feel like the fans' toys... Phantasm Mirage is too tuned to a detriment and I could I could see that I could almost argue that too some of the things in it that I thought were a little bit weird like The the way the chest works and looks and he is a bit plain looking But he does have a bit of a metallic sheen to the blue paint and all that kind of stuff So I do like it and I do slightly prefer this one to the transform element the transform elements really good too Because it is very tuned, but some people feel this is going too tuned too tuned to a detriment. I actually like it. I'm, I'm the problem. I'm the reason that they're going too tuned. So next I want to talk about another trend that I'm seeing. And it's kind of a trend that has always been here. So I guess you really can't call it a trend. But I'm going to call it a trend and it's upgrade kits. Now there's a lot of upgrade kits made by third party companies in the Masterpiece realm to upgrade their Masterpiece kits. Just like here with this Genbound upgrade kit for the Devastator uh, Gravity Builder. And so this makes your Jinbao oversized Devastator look better. So instead of just taking a straight K oversized and all this kind of stuff. But these third party kits enhance Masterpiece figures. But most of the time they're made for mainline Hasbro stuff. So this is a version of I think the DNA design kit for the Motormaster. But this is sort of a KO of it. But this is a, another upgrade kit more or less for the Motormaster for the Legacy, for your Minasaur, and with it, this is the color prototype, or actually probably the end result, and it should be coming pretty soon. So with that, there's also a reissue on the Motormaster. But this is what third party started doing. They started accenting Hasbro mainline chug and chug scale stuff and making it better. This makes it better, makes it bigger, enhances it, and really, I don't know how much longer this thing's gonna be, only $25, but 
I already paid for mine, so it should be coming pretty soon, but I don't have the Motor Master to come with it. These upgrades are what third party does. These, these masterpiece third party companies usually get their start with them. And yes, before y'all remind me, I do know that's how Fans Toy started. They started making a KO trailer of the original G1 Optimus Prime trailer for the MP01. I'm perfectly fine with that. I don't have a problem with it. Speaking of upgrade kits, speaking of trailers, this is a Generation Toy trailer upgrade kit for MP44. So this is considered an upgrade kit, but it's just a trailer. And it's giving people an option. They get like a KO trailer. It doesn't look exactly like the MP44, but it does look like a trailer it would work and they, they don't even want to use an mp44 in the pictures because they don't want to get in trouble i guess they're smart and they know how to play the game they've been around for a while although i'm not going to talk too much about ko i probably will talk a bit about ko in different segments here but there is a fourth party trailer coming for mp44 i don't know when there's no release date for it but those people that really want to get a trailer and i see this all the time they can get one it's going to be a fourth party it's supposed to be exactly the same as what came with MP44, which is which is what the difference between buying the $100 KO and the $450 original. So another trend that I'm starting to see in Masterpiece is making more set pieces, more things that can interact with figures, more accessories and these kinds of things. This is the medical bed for MP44 or pretty much any Masterpiece, masterpiece Prime. It could be for Magic Square, Transform Element. It all work on there just fine, I believe. That's my guess, but. Uh, I think you can anything you can lay a figure flat on should work fine. This is 50 bucks for a table. Sounds like a lot, but you think about masterpiece and the scale and the size, and it's it's gonna do a few other things probably other than just be a bed because I do see that this opens up, and I'm sure there's gonna be some pretty cool features to it. I don't even know what all the features are, but if you're gonna make a death of Optimus Prime scene, you need this, and you need you need a dead Prime, right? So in addition to trailers and dead beds. There's also some pretty cool thrones that are out there. So they've been making these thrones for a while now, and there's just cool set pieces. This is the MA001. So this is the Moss Toys throne. So it's sold out everywhere. Moss Toys is defunct, I believe. So I don't know if you can find this on the secondary market, but there's other companies making different kinds of thrones. Here's one Giga Power made for their Dino Throne. So it's funny because I was looking at this and I knew there's been thrones made in the past, and yet they're all pretty much sold out that's pretty interesting this one is the gigapower mp masterpiece dino king throne and yeah, it's sold out too and there's not even a picture of the completed product and it's sold out and there's this one here it's a fourth party tw01 accessory pack mp52 starscream throne and everything else you need for him maybe you don't want to use starscream on it and you want it for megatron that would work too but here's the throne. Set pieces like this, this is a trend. There's more of this stuff coming on the way, I'm sure. And this is some stuff from the past. Something you can get right now for 28 bucks on Show Z. And we're going to see more stuff soon. Now, I'll have to place this as an accessory. It's a figure, but it's an accessory. This is the Mod Fans Transfiguration Ruler Roller Blue version. And the thing about it is it turns into a roller. And this is up for pre-order at Show Z also. I think this is up for pre-order pretty much everywhere, but this roller is going to fit on an Optimus Prime MP, I believe an MP44 trailer. It's going to be able to haul it. Maybe they've made it to where it can haul both. I don't know, but it is a roller. Does look pretty cool overall. Interesting that it's even getting made. What else is interesting? It's only 37 bucks. I was thinking this thing would be like 50 at least. It's a it's masterpiece in my opinion. I think it's masterpiece scale, but I thought it would be a little bit bigger than this. It is 5.71 inches tall, so it scales sort of with car bots. It looks pretty good. It looks to be painted really well, and with that blue, that's the good American version. And, you know, that's one of the things about these. It's another trend, and we're not touching on it now, but we're going to touch on it now. We probably shouldn't. But you want this one in, say, maybe a silver or something? Well, they got you covered, too, because you can also order it in silver. So you have the blue version, you have the silver version, whichever one you want to go with. And I know those are options we have in the G1 line. Now they're options you have in the Masterpiece accessory for 37 bucks. So it's interesting. This is a trend that we're going down with Masterpiece. It's kind of cool. And, and it's coming pretty soon. So the next trend that I'm starting to see is enhanced paint. And so if you want to go back further with the fans toys, 
we all think, yeah, Fansoys has premium paint. Their paint always looks good. It always looks amazing. It's painted really well. But no, it's not, because if you go back to Tesla, and you've got their spotter, and you go back to Lupus, which it'll be interesting to see the reissue of Lupus, but with this Tesla, it wasn't painted very well. There was very little to no paint on it. It was bare plastic. It was early. Fansoys was still trying to hit their stride. They were trying to get stuff figured out, and... It wasn't a horrible figure, but it had poor quality plastic, broke real easy, very little paint. But when they put out the reissue, well, not a reissue, 2.0, sorry, not a reissue. Their 2.0 had a lot of paint on it. So with that, they're stepping from no paint to premium paint. And it was a gradual process for them. It wasn't really a flip of a switch. And we all have come to know a great paint job from Fans Toys. But guess who did the same thing? X Transbots. I think x Transbots really came out of the blue with their Vertus, and it's their Springer, and we all expected it to just be kind of the standard amount of paint that they put on there, but this was considered, quote unquote, their premium paint. When they came out with this one, with premium paint, it does have a premium paint job. The shoulders do get scratched up. They are offering, I think, unpainted replacements for the shoulders. I didn't bother getting them. Mine aren't scratched up, so I'm not worried about it. But this is the beginning, in my opinion, the beginning of where they went serious with premium paint. They charge a bit of a premium price for that premium paint, but they're going for a much higher end look with the paint. And that's a trend with extra high end premium paint. Trend that, that we're starting to see with the Legends, the mini masterpieces too. But the premium paint job doesn't just start or end <laughs> with those figures. The premium paint job carries over to different characters and doing different types of repaints, such as the G1 look. Now, this is becoming more common trend is a G1 repaint and a G1 repaint in a very high end premium paint job. So that premium paint job is not going to waste and they're getting you different variety. Of course, they want to milk the mold. I'm not against them milking the mold if they're giving us some different stuff and it does look pretty good. Some of the things they're doing, this is X Transbot's toy version of their Magnus, which has a very premium paint job. Fansoys is also doing this. They've done this Astro Train. They've done Grimlock. They've done Galvatron. And they've probably done a whole lot more that I just can't think of right now. But with that, this toy aesthetic recolor repaint in a high premium paint job makes a shelf look more interesting. It really does. And one of the things is they always make these in lower quantities. Okay, so the next thing that I need to discuss is complexity. This is a trend that we're seeing to have perfection in both modes. The transformation is a little bit more complex. I did make a video where I took a lot of snapshots and I don't have those on this computer readily available. So I took some new snapshots of recently. Truthfully, this is probably the worst thing I've transformed and it wasn't too bad. It was the most complex of the ones that I've transformed lately since I've switched computers. And uh, then there's the Star Toys one, which it really isn't that bad either. But you can tell they've increased the complexity of these things in a way. And some of the things in the past, like Bad Cube, were unnecessarily complex. They were, the complexity of them just made no sense. But it almost makes sense that these are as complex as they are. And, you know, here's a Pterosaur that it's, it's interesting engineering and ingenuity and how they get from point A to point B. But it's also a necessary evil to have so many steps and to have such a high level of complexity with these because of the fact that it looks so good in both modes, but matching the cartoon and bringing it into real world is not as easy as it looks. Well, we're seeing that every time we transform one of these. Increased complexity is a trend, and I think it's gonna continue, but Takara seems to be making them a little bit more simple. That's kind of funny. The next trend we're starting to see, and we've seen it in the past with Make Toys, we've seen it with other companies, but it's KOs of third party. This is a trend that we continue to see, although we haven't seen Lupus yet, which I thought we'd have seen Lupus yet, which it's still kind of funny because it seems like we get the knockoff of Lupus. And again, these really aren't knockoffs. These are the creators making their own version. Theoretically, the creators of the design, the designers are making their own going off on their own because they're not properly being compensated. But I don't know why we haven't gotten Lupus yet. That's interesting that we have not gotten Lupus. We've gotten some of the other ones, like we've gotten the Thomas and we got the Quietus and some of this other stuff going on, but not Lupus yet. And I'm still looking forward to it because I don't have a Lupus, but I think they're waiting 
for fan toys to put their lupus out with their level of paint job and see what fan toys does and they're just going to copy them which is strange because if these people that went out on their own they just should do a super premium level and blow it away and make to where fan toys can't match it but that's not the reality that we live in but anyway i'm just curious how much deeper this whole k think ko thing's gonna go but we still see takara getting knocked off on almost everything but this video is not really about knockoffs it's about trends and ko's are always a trend so the next trend we're seeing is reissues now reissues are nothing new we've seen reissues all the time reissuing old figures and putting them out new but we've seen fans toys really step up their reissue game by reissuing a lot of their old figures but doing some fixes to them which is something that i really like they did fixes to the bugs they did fixes to the other things but the question mark always is will they reissue all of their dinos so there's a couple of dinos that have been reissued that you can still go get right now at several different places but will you be able to get the rest of them if you're starting from scratch or will you be paying four six eight hundred bucks for the other ones down the road to try to complete the team and you you can mix and match these with giga power and takara and some others with a little bit of cheating tricks but most people truly want to stick with one team from one company because that's just the way people are and collectors are and so with that they want to go the whole mile with fans toys if they start with fans toys will they reissue that's always a question mark but they don't reissue like the toy recolors so i'm still going to classify this as rumor until i can see a real pre-order but it does look like may toys are going to be reissuing their contact shot now this is from tf upgrader network is where this has come from which is really cool it's exciting make toys really does need to put this figure back out and if it really is they're saying that they're doing pre-orders themselves for this so i'm wondering shows he doesn't have it uh, tf source doesn't have it chosen prime doesn't have it i'm looking at a few places no other place has it other than this tf upgrader network but this figure will print money for make toys they need to reissue this and that's one of those things you never know what's going to get reissued and that is a masterpiece trend they don't want to tip their hand and let you know because they want old stock to sell out and they want their stuff to look like it's going to hold value over time and the thing with x transbots where they were coming out with reissue after reissue after reissue after reissue after reissue and it started to make their stuff look like it wasn't valuable so they pulled back on the reissues some of their stuff now is getting expensive and so with that then they casually reissue as they go but i don't see any reissues for x transbots on the dockets anytime soon and i haven't heard what's getting reissued from fans toys much past the ones that we've already heard about in the past long time ago but these companies all need to get caught up the last point i want to touch on is options sometimes it feels like there's too many options options are good but it feels like there's a lot out there with these sky fires jet fires i'm actually accumulating some of these pictures for a video in the future but I thought this was a fun picture that I include right here. But there are multiple different Jetfire slash Skyfire options out there that would work in a masterpiece scale for the most part. And I never thought we'd see this. I never thought we'd be to this point that we have this many options out there. That is really awesome, really exciting. Talking Skyfire from the G1 show, and they all look pretty good overall. I like to go to my good old trusty Springer. I just know that I can always pull up like six versions of Springer on a moment's notice. The thing about it is that there are a lot of options out there and options are good, but it seems like once Takara makes a figure, it ends third party making them like they did with their Megatron MP36. There were no new Megatrons in the Masterpiece scale since then, but it might just stunt them and slow them down like we saw with X Transbots now putting out their Dante and they're coming out with a few other ones that are out there, but I start to wonder if X Transbots puts out their Galvatron or they haven't got it out yet, and then Takara announces a Galvatron, will we still see X Transbots put theirs out? So there's a lot of question, but it really does still feel like Takara, since they are the big player, that when they put something out, it either stops it or slows it way down for the third party masterpiece realm. But options are good. I'm glad there's all these options out there for different price points, different aesthetics, whatever makes you happy. But we see this with a lot of characters. But then some characters only get one option. There's only one option coming for Omnibots. One option coming for several of the ones that X Transbots doing, like Punch Counterpunch, and they're doing Runabout and Runamuck, and some of these other ones. So it's 
it's really strange how companies latch on to the same character over and over and over because they think it's going to be popular and it's going to sell, and they avoid the obscure ones, but I think that's a gold mine hitting obscure characters that nobody's done. If you're the first to the market, you do well. If you're the best in the market, you do well. If you're last and you're not the best, you don't do well. So anyway, those are some of the trends that I'm seeing over the last 20 years with Masterpiece Transformers. Tell me what you think about my trends I've noticed and what other trends are you seeing out there because I actually plan on revisiting this down the road next year because I actually have more on my list, but I'm running out of time and I don't want this to be an hour long video. Let me know in the comments below, like and subscribe. Have your hanger out.